Welcome to our press conference at the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. My name is Teddy Jimbo. Um, I'm, a, I'm a co chair uh, of this committee that organizes all media events uh, at this club, uh, and I'm your moderator today. And uh, we have a very important uh, press conference today by uh, four uh, distinguished speakers. Uh, I'm going to just briefly uh, introduce all of them. And then uh, we'll uh, have each of them uh, speak briefly. And then the uh, uh, floor will be open for uh, Q&A. Um, OK, my immediate right uh, is uh, Mr. Joe Sanhan. Uh, I was told that in English, uh, it's pronounced Joe Sanhan. But in Japanese, I guess uh, you write it in katakana, uh, Kyo, Kyo Sanhan. Um, so uh, either way, uh, whichever you prefer. But uh, I was told to uh, pronounce Joe Sanhan in English. And uh, anyway, he is a, a former police officer in Myanmar. And uh, he has uh, fled to Japan while uh, he was in training. He was undergoing training in Thailand uh, last year. And now he uh, resides in Japan as an as a refugee, uh, but he knows uh, a lot about uh, the reality of the human rights violations under the uh, junta uh, military uh, rule in Myanmar. And he also, he told me that this is the, uh, the first time that he will ever speak before the, the press after uh, his. Uh, uh, leaving uh, Myanmar. So uh, this is, I think, very significant press conference. And uh, uh, the next right is, uh, I think he's a kind of familiar face at this club, uh, the uh, Kitazumi-san. Uh, he, he was, all, he was uh, uh, arrested. He has an uh, experience of being detained in, uh, in Myanmar. Uh, he's a journalist. Uh, Yuki uh, Kitazumi. Okay, and then uh, the next right is also uh, he's be, he's been here with us uh, before. Uh, Toru Kubota, he's a documentary uh, documentary filmmaker, uh, and he was also detained uh, by military in Myanmar. And uh, he spoke at this club right after his release and returned to Japan. And we have uh, another speaker. Uh, uh, on Zoom, uh, which is uh, on the screen right now. Um, uh, his name is Sean Turnell. He's a former uh, economic advisor to Aung San Suu Kyi, and he's speaking from Australia now. So uh, those four people will speak first. And um, so Mr. Kitazumi will speak first, and then uh, Mr. Kubota, and then uh, and Mr. Uh, uh, Turnell. And then uh, uh, we have... Uh, uh, Joe Sanhan, uh, uh, make a brief comment first. Kitazumi-san, uh, uh, Okay, so, and they all speak in English. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the, Mr. Jinbo and all the reporters here. Yes, my name is Yuki Kitazumi, the j reporter. I have been uh, in seven years in Yangon and uh, arrested. Uh, just after, just two months after the military coup in uh, 2021. Yes, uh, I just uh, speak very briefly uh, here today uh, about my experience. The, the February in uh, 2021, my house in Yangon was uh, raided by the uh, joint troops of uh, Myanmar military and the Myanmar police force. And uh, I stay, I have detained in the insane prison for one month. Yeah. And uh, I was released uh, after one month. However, the, in my experience, I feel the, the police officers or the military officers uh, in region is also a human being. Uh, the, even the uh, military officer uh, who arrested me 
is also the human being, and uh, the, the, he has an emotion. And uh, I don't feel uh, they are the cyborg or robot or something like that. So that today, the, uh, Mr. Cho San Han is the very uh, the good example for the, the officers who are thinking about their uh, future of their country and act very bravely. So the priest listen about uh, his speech. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kubota. Thank you for coming to this press conference. My name is Toru Kubota, um, freelance documentary filmmaker, and I was arbitrarily arrested by the Myanmar junta last year when I was filming the, the pro-democracy protest um, in happening in Yangon, in the street of Yangon. Um, I did not go through physical violence myself by the military soldier during the investigation, but I was surrounded by the violent um, military soldiers who have, co who have pointed the rifle at me when they arrest me. Um, um, I want to emphasize the fact that um, I was falsely accused and sentenced to 10 years in prison for the crimes that I did not commit. Um, because I was filming um, from the location about 50 meters away from the protesters. Um, I was not participating in them. Uh, however, during the investigation, I clearly remember that um, I was forcibly ordered to hold a banner that um, the arrested protesters were holding. Um, they, they forcibly uh, made us look like the um, um, uh, perpetrators, um, I, they fabricated the evidence that they charged me the sedition charge, um, which was not true. Um, so um, the testimony by Mr. Cho San Han will be extremely valuable in terms of um, revealing how such wrongdoing are uh, carried out by the junta. And I believe it's crucial for the international community to condemn it um, to improve it's crucial to improve the human rights situation um, that is uh, becoming worse and worse in Myanmar. Um, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Tano? Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you very ahead. much, Wayne. Thank you to all the journalists at the Foreign Correspondents Club. Um, it's a very great honor to be talking to you today at this wonderful institution. It's also an incredible honor to be talking with Toru, with Yuki, and above all, with Jo San Han. Um, and I guess what I wanted to say right at the very outset, and I think this will emerge as a theme, as both um, Yuki and Toru mentioned, that um, in Jo San Han, we actually have a genuine hero, a, a real one. You know, we, we don't see them so often in life, I think, you know, and sometimes it's in Hollywood movies and so on. Uh, but in Jo San Han, I know in my personal circumstance, uh, he went to incredible lengths at, in, at extraordinary risk to himself to help me, to advise me, uh, and, and nothing gave me greater pleasure when I was finally released. So I was a political prisoner as well. Um, so I was economic advisor to Dorong Sung Suu Kyi, arrested on the 6th of February 2021. And I never got out until the 18th of November, or the 17th of November, uh, 2022, with Toru. Um, so, uh, uh, which I shall mention again in a moment, but just to say uh, I experienced all of that, but Jo San Han uh, was incredibly helpful to me. Uh, he was with me only very briefly at the start of my arrest. I wish I'd listened more to him. He gave me wonderful advice, which I partly listened to, but in my distress and panic and all that probably didn't listen enough to be honest uh to to his advice um this this is not a book plug i hasten to add but i just want to point out how much again uh how much i value Joe san han so my my book on my experience this thing called unlikely prisoner has just come out but there's a photograph i just wanted to show you if i may um i've got some photographs of Actually, that's not coming out very well. Apologies for that. <laughs> it's, I've got the, the blur function on. and uh, Anyway, I, I had some photos of insane prison 
which is the most extraordinary looking place, uh, but I also have a photo of Bill Sanhan, but it's the one that, that you guys have got there at the uh, Correspondence Club, uh, but also a picture that Joel Sanhan uh, sent me, which was a picture of me in this very tiny space where I was imprisoned uh, right at the beginning that I call in the book, I call it the box. Uh, and Joel Sanhan was around at that time interpreting for me and trying to help me. Um, so I certainly echo the points uh, that Yuki made right at the beginning as well, just to say that the Myanmar, so many regular police and other people in Myanmar, of course, have got nothing to do with this awful junta that's now ruling the country. Uh, and they're the first victims, you know, along with the people of Myanmar more broadly. So just to echo those points. But I think, you know, we have in Joel San, San Han uh, an example not only of that, not only of a good policeman at the time as he was, uh, but also a wonderful human being, um, a genuine hero. So uh, it's just immensely pleasing to me uh, to will be in a moment to see him again. Um, uh, and like, uh, likewise, Toru, I, I don't want to go past by saying that the last time I saw Toru was exactly one year ago when we were being transported to uh, Yangon Airport together uh, to be released. So, yeah, but I ended up nearly spending two years there, um, in the prison, that is. J just a final comment, if I may, and I, I want to leave plenty of time for questions, so I, I won't go on too much longer. Um, but just to say that, you know, the... Recent news out of Myanmar is both good and bad. It's incredibly savage. As we know, this junta is brutal beyond belief. But one of the reasons for their brutality, of course, is that they're increasingly desperate. And I think people will have seen the, a lot of the news about how uh, they've suffered a great number of military defeats. But with, with my economist hat back on, can I just say I can, we, we can see the evidence of that on the economic front at the moment. And I'd sort of draw people's attention to the desperate struggle of Myanmar's junta uh, to capture foreign exchange as mu much as they can. It's really the only economic policy they have at the moment to grab as much foreign exchange as it can be, as, as they can. And they're exploiting Burmese workers overseas uh, and doing all sorts of things to do that. But just to say, you know, if one was looking for evidence that this regime in Myanmar is on the back foot, and on the way out, we can look at economic and financial data as well as some of the more traditional uh, military stories. So I'll stop there because I'm anxious to hear from Joel Sanhan, uh, as I'm sure we all are. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tonell. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Joel Sanhan, please. Does up. Thank you very much. Or yeah, I'm so sad hearing Mr. Kubuta, Mr. Yuki, and Professor Sean arrested and fairly and imprisoned in Myanmar. And I'm also very sad to tell about me, my story, and my family story. But I have to tell about this to let the world know what happened with me and my family. Can I show the slide? Sure. So I would like to start with my fear in politics. So as you already know, in Myanmar, we cannot speak out about politics. We cannot speak out democracy. And my family and I grew up with great fear speaking about democracy and politics because there is very serious threat and punishment for speaking out democracy and politics in Myanmar. So in this picture, I would like to show you my condition 
in Cyclone Nugget in 2008, where I was in the center of the cyclone. I could barely alive and survive in the cyclone. As you see, I was like in this character. So this picture is from the movie named The Impossible. So I had to hurt the big tree overnight to survive. And then I have to be in small village for a few days and finally could reunion with my family in my native town. My family thought that I was dead in a cyclone because there were more than 1,300 people who were dead in the Nakis, which is the deadliest cyclone of the 21st century. So in 2015, my beloved mom passed away. She was dead because of the bad digital system. She was just 43 years old. And I could not save her. I could not protect her. In 2010 to in 2015, I was one of the exchange police cadets out of four at the Ryan Police Cadet Academy in Thailand. And you can see this is the graduation group photos of we call RPC in short. And there were another three Myanmar police officers who graduated together with me. But just me, stand up for democracy, oppose the military gender. The rest, they are serving for the military gender. And my family and I became their enemies to arrest, to persecute and kill. And you can see, these Myanmar police officers got promoted recently on the Myanmar police force day on 1st October to a higher rank, a higher position because of serving Myanmar military gender and regime. But for me, they are trying to arrest me and my family because standing up for democracy and then oppose the brutal Myanmar gender and regime. So there are another four Myanmar police officers who completed RBCA. They are also serving for Myanmar military gender. And the third class are currently studying at RBCA so far. I attended many international law enforcement agencies, sorry, international law enforcement meetings and trainings to be a good police officer, to save good people, to be a good law enforcement officer, supported by the United States of America or many democracy countries. So some of them are the International Law Enforcement Academy of Bangkok. We call ILEA in short. And this is the graduation ceremony at ILEA and United Nations Conference Center, Bangkok. So there were many law enforcement agencies attended this kind of trainees. So we would like to be a good police officers and law enforcement officer to serve for our democracy, governments, and to protect good people from the bad people. And in 2000, 18 to 2019, I was the Australian scholarship awardee to study Master of Arts in International Relations in Australia. And I really appreciate the Australian government to support me to have stronger democracy mindset, to make contribution to our society, to our country development, to protect good people. 
and I will finish. After I finish my master's degree in Australia, I return to Myanmar and I try to share democracy mindset and give aware awareness, raising awareness to the Myanmar police officer to change their mindset, to have knowledge about human rights, to protect good people. So this picture is at Detective Police Training School before the military coup and until after military coup. It was six month training course in Insane, Yangon. At the time, there was a general election in November 2020. So for being a police officer, we have a huge risk to vote for the LND party for the democracy. Not just for the police officer, but also for their family members. So we could not dare enough to vote for LND party. But personally, I took that risk to vote for LND for the democracy in Myanmar. But as all, all of you already know, the military gender, they didn't accept the election result. They took the power illegally. And they arrest our democracy leaders, Do San Suu Kyi and our president, and also arrested the Professor, professor Shao Dane unfairly. So I was in the detective police training school, and at the other time, Professor Shao Dane was arrested. I was the first interpreter for him. I was so shocked when I saw him because his condition was so bad. He was treated badly by the bad police officers. So I tried my best to save his life in the CID integration room. And I briefly and confidentially took this picture to, to let the world know that how bad he was this, in this bouse and how he was, how he suffered a lot in the bouse. And I was so afraid, I was so worried about him all the time since I saw him in this bouse. He could not survive without any support, without any help. And no one could help him. And no one knew, knew that where he was, even Australian embassy, because everything was confidential. So for me, I tried to make everything for his release as quickly as possible, and then back to Australia to reunion with his family. So I made a report to the chief of police, to the Ministry of Home Affairs, to release him as quickly as possible. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't have any mistakes. But finally, after a few days, the chief of police or the gender leader they didn't like me. They changed another interpreter. And they have so many suspicions on me. That's why I help him too much. And they try to force me to get serious and sensitive information from Professor Shao Dane to jail him and to give punishment to him. And they could kill him in the prison after they get serious and enough information from him. So that is very sensitive and very VIP case for my entire life. And after they changed another interpreter, I decided I had to flee Myanmar because if they knew about this, 
details, they will arrest me and my family members who are in the police apartment in Nibido and that they are controlled as a hostage. So after my training course, I have to return to Nibido, which is the capital city of Myanmar. During the time, I attended many international meetings. So the Australian government requested in every meeting to release Professor Shao Dane as soon as possible. I made many reports to the chief of police and minister of home affairs about his release. So finally, they assigned me to be a security team leader instead because they no longer want me to involve in Professor Shao Dane case. So I was a duty team leader for four months and they told me to arrest any protest or protester to use the gun and the rear bullet. But I refused to arrest any protester. I ignore whenever I see the protest or the protester. So finally, they tried to arrest me being a watermelon. So we call watermelon who, are, who left democracy and support democracy inside by being a government official. So I had to make a confidential plan to make my family out of Myanmar. And then I followed them to Thailand later. So in the Professor Shandane Bows, so in Professor Shandane books, so he mentioned me yeah, in, this, in, in his book, how I briefly take, took a picture and then save his life. So I highly recommend you to read his book to know how bad the gender, the Myanmar data is, and then how he suffered during his arrested in Myanmar. And this is the picture I took for him. Yeah. And then I saved his picture in my phone six valve until he released. And I finally recovered this picture and I sent it to him. And then I recommend you to read this book and then you can know every information about the purity of Myanmar gender. So when I try to free Myanmar, so firstly, I could free to Australia, where I did my master degree, and Australian government supported me to be a good police officer with democracy mindset. However, I saw this news on the, on the Facebook by the media that Digital Mail Online gave a threat, serious threat to Australian ambassador not to provide any protection visa or any humanitarian protection to military or police personnel in Australia. Otherwise, he won't release Professor Shaudane. So when I saw this news, I was so worried about Professor release. So I was patiently waiting for his release. And then I'm trying to flee to Australia when he released in November last year. But for some reason, I have to come to Japan. So Australia, Professor Shao Daniel release was my main reason and main priority because I involved in his case deeply and I cried since the first time I saw him in the bad condition because he could barely survive and alive in the prison in Myanmar. So finally, I wanted to request something very important. So now Professor Shao Dane and very, a lot of good people 
call me a hero, a hero police captain, taking huge risks to save good people, to save, to help people and democracy. But now, as I mentioned you earlier, my family in Thailand is under serious stress and grave danger. So I would like to request the Australian government to save my family's life. And I'm really proud of what I have done for the democracy in Myanmar and for Brother Shantanir's life and standing for democracy. As I mentioned you earlier that, so now there is a strong relation and protective cooperation between Myanmar Police Force and Ryan Thai Police. So that is why my family and I are always worried about my family's safety in Thailand and not military gender and regime. They are trying to arrest my family in Thailand as a hostage to get me back to Myanmar. So please save my family's life. And I highly and strongly request Australian government to save my family's life. Yeah, I would like to show this sign of uh, save my family life. So I hope that Australian government hear my voice and know my story to save my family life. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much uh, for our riveting uh, speech. And uh, uh, thank you, uh, all of you, uh, including uh, uh, Mr. Tonell in Australia. OK, we're going to go to Q&A. Um, there is one microphone set up here. So uh, please raise your hand. And if you're designated, uh, come forward uh, and cite your name and uh, affiliation if, you, if there's one. And uh, please just to ask one question each. Uh, if there's a time, you will have a, a second chance to ask more questions. But let's uh, limit to uh, one question each first. Um, OK, uh, anyone? Okay, while well, you, you guys consider uh, the questions, let me just uh, start out. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Jo, jo Sanhanan, um so you were calling for the Australian government to accept your family uh, as a refugee. Is that the, is that the call? Um, and also, uh, uh, for those who don't understand the sort of a dynamism, why is your family uh, in danger uh, while they are in? Thailand, and exactly who are who are your family? You know who are the members of, members of your family anyway? Okay. Yeah. So I have lost my mom mm. already. Mm. So I have my dad and my siblings, and they are in Thailand. No government can protect him. I'm sorry. No government can protect them. And you know, military gender, Myanmar military gender, they want to get my family back. Mm. So. There are a lot of Myanmar police officers and military personnel. They make announce, announcement to arrest my family and then to kill them because I am their enemies. And as you know, being a special liaison police officer for many years between Myanmar police force and Ryan Thai police, I am deeply involved in many bilateral meetings and trainings. So just me out of eight stand up for democracy and oppose the Myanmar military gender. So they really want to get me back 
to Myanmar. And since once I arrested or my family arrested, we will get persecuted to, de to, to death. And the only thing I can help my family is to request a protection from the Australian government where I did my master's degree supported by Australian government. And I had no other protection. And I don't know how to request protection for my family apart from Australian government. That is why now I strongly request Australian government yeah, mm -hmm. to save my family life. They need to reset, reset there mm -hmm. in Australia because they are very worried their safety every day. And me too, I could not be happy or be confident for my family's safety. Yes. Mm. I understand that you are granted a refugee status here in Japan. Um, have you considered or even have you tried to get the same status for your family in Japan? Have you made any request uh, with the Japanese government? So firstly, uh, I understand that uh, my family members are not my direct family members, like my uh, wife or children. So they are my dad and my siblings. So I'm not sure if they are eligible or not. Mm. And secondly, yeah, so they feel uh, to settle in Australia because it will be, they will feel more confident and they will feel more uh, happy. I don't know how to mention it, but yeah, due to some reasons, yeah, it would be better if they could study in Australia. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyone for a question? Not yet. Okay. Well, we have uh, two journalists uh, at the front, the front table. So, uh, how about uh, uh, Kitazumi-san, Kubota-san? Um, if you think there's any good questions to be asked to uh, to your friend. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, uh, the, 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 your experience is very uh, rare for the reporters here and uh, uh, for me. Yes, I want to ask your uh, experience in the uh, Myanmar Police Force. The, some of them uh, is the, the fleet and leave uh, for their CDM. Uh, however, the uh, here it is difficult, and in, in your case, uh, the, yeah, of course, it is difficult. So please explain the difficulty if the soldier or policeman uh, try to leave the uh, police force. Why it is difficult? How it is difficult? So the, yeah, the, please explain about it. Since after military coup happened, so good police officer would like to join CDM movement because we don't agree the military coup. However, they control police officer by using fear with our family members. So my family were in the police apartment in Nebido. If I oppose the brutal Myanmar gender, they will arrest my family easily. And they will get me. And they will kill all of us. So that fear makes us not to oppose the military gender, not to stand up for democracy. So not just for me, but we have to care about our family members who are in the hand of brutal Myanmar gender. So that is the main reason why many good police officers or military passengers could not oppose the blue domain agenda. So that is why I plan confidentially to take my family out of Myanmar after I save Professor's life. Because that is the main reason make me to free Myanmar as quickly as possible with my family members. Otherwise, there is no 
possibility to free Myanmar and that to speak here today. Okay. How about Mr. Kubota? Um, um, how do you, um, because there is a, especially recently, there's a information leakage about the high ranked uh, military officers personnel were arrest, arrested and uh, also there are more and more military soldiers in the battlefields uh, surrendered and joining um, the democracy forces. Um, why do you think this, um, this is happening and uh, what do you know about a division and crackdown of the, the junta inside. And do you think there are more and more watermelons like you who might not have able to speak up like you, but still working for democracy uh, inside? So since in 2021, after many of the coup, so there were so many international pressure. And then I, participated in many international meetings, including um, Bafata Shantanese uh, release meeting. So we made many meeting reports. So in the report, yeah, I uh, suggested to release Bafata Shantanese as quickly as possible. So some, uh, that kind of meet, uh, meeting reports make the chief of police or Ministry of Home Affairs uh, get less trusted on the junior uh, government officials like me. And some meeting reports leak to the media. So they do not trust their junior officer or even their uh, same rank or higher rank senior officials. So inside, they don't trust to each other. Mm. And they try to inform the Myanmar digital mail online about their colleagues or about their uh, inside problem. So one who can inform me online as quickly as possible with evidence, with enough evidence. So that one win to take another down. That is why now so many um, meeting or confidential orders leak to media and it made many senior police officer or even military officer get to the jail. They got trouble because inside them, they don't trust each other. Mm. Mm, I see. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, please, please come forward. And please just cite your name and affiliation. Yeah, hi, my name is Peter Morris, and uh, normally I'm a lawyer, but I also write for Asia Times about uh, Myanmar. So thank you all for your bravery, and, and thanks for organizing this. Uh, today, FCCJ. So uh, my question is, so uh, people often say that there are strong ties between the, the, the Thai military and, and Burma, Burmese military, but what about the police? Could you, could you explain more about the relationship between the, the Thai police and the Burmese police force? And also, I mean, I, related to that, uh, what do you think about the potential for cooperation between uh, Thai police and Burmese police on the issue of of the cyber uh, slavery and scamming and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, I mean. Now probably Burmese police is not a high priority for them. Maybe it never was. But but let's say going forward. Let's say after uh, the revolution wins. Uh, uh, do, what do you think about the potential for rebuilding the police and and, and addressing the issue of of cyber? Uh, the scamming and, and slavery and stuff like that. So, yeah, I would explain you a little bit about Ryan Thai Police Academy, where I attended for four years, plus Thai language one year. So we were the first class of Myanmar Police Force history 
there to um, boost, to improve, to country corporate operation. So we attended the Ryan Thai Police Academy together with Thai police officer for four years. Mm. So that made us a, had a good and a strong cooperation between two police forces. And now second class has finished already and the third class is studying at the moment. So they will improve cooperation, bilateral cooperation more and more and uh, the Myanmar gender administration. So Thailand is a neighboring country of Myanmar and then there are many Myanmar labors and Myanmar democratic, uh, democratic yeah, uh, activities in Thailand. So most of them are illegal in Thailand. So Myanmar police, they trying to get all of them back to Myanmar by requesting Thai police. Yeah. So arresting criminals is two countries cooperation, but now arresting Myanmar democ democracy activists is another mission to do. That is why they will improve their cooperation more and more. But for NUG government now, it's, uh, it's very difficult to get cooperation with Thai government and the Thai police force. So Myanmar Project Jena is in power to have cooperation with Thai, Thai police force and Thai government more than national unity government. So hopefully, if this revolution, after this revolution, for energy government can have more cooperation with Thai government and Thai police force, not like Myanmar police right now, arresting good people, requesting to arrest good people in Thailand and send back to Myanmar, directly or indirectly, Okay. Uh, any? Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, also, if you have a question uh, for uh, Mr. Tunnel, please please feel free to ask. Sure. Thank you. My name is Mara Bajan from the Japan Times. My question is more focused on Japan, uh, so perhaps not for Mr. Tunnel, but for anyone who's present here. So, um, how how long have you been in Japan? Joseon Han and sorry, I'm um, nearly 11 months. Yes, okay. since December 2022. Okay, so I mean, as we know, Japan doesn't accept many refugees um, or doesn't grant many people refugee status, but of the people it does, quite a few of them are from Myanmar. And so I was wondering, you know, what are you finding in Japan? Is there activism within the or mobilization within the community of uh, Myanmar refugees? Um, and foreign nationals, and sort of how are, how is the Myanmar community in Japan advocating or pushing for democracy back home? And this question is also open to Mr. Kubota and sort of everyone here. Thank you very much. Okay. Who wants to go first? Um, so the question, um, concerns about the how Japan's accepting refugees and also how the Myanmar refugee uh, Myanmar mm. uh, refugee and immigrants community in Japan is advocating mm. for democracy mm -hmm. um, first the first question um, as you mentioned um, Japan does not recognize many refugees including um, people from Myanmar um, I first met uh, Mr. Cho San Han uh, in February, last February. Um, he could not say much about himself. Um, he just talked to me in English and he just explained I think, that he just came one or two months earlier before. Um, 
this is a uh, because of the reason that Japan could not provide enough support for people. I mean, asylum seekers who's um, on the who's on the process of refugee recognition. Uh, this is um, uh, extremely shameful um, as a Japanese citizen and a huge loss for the civil society uh, because many people cannot speak up fearing because they fear about being repatriated back to the country where they fled from. Um, I think as a democratic country, a uh, leading uh, uh, democratic country Jap in Asia, they, uh, Japan has a responsibility to provide um, freedom and the security for or, or those who fled from uh, oppressed country. And that's what I believe in. Um, um, as for the, the Burmese community in Japan, I think Mr. Kitazumi knows um, more about these things, but they are very active in advocating um, the lobbying uh, at the Congress, um, uh, requesting more uh, pressure against the junta, also uh, requesting uh, the government to recognize a national unity government as a uh, as as an offshore offshore government for, of Myanmar. Yeah. So for me, firstly, yeah, I deeply appreciate Japanese government for providing yeah, humanitarian assistance or humanitarian protection to me and Myanmar refugees here. When I first arrived here, I was so worried about my safety. As a police captain, I cannot tell anyone that I am police captain who joined the stadium because I knew that the Myanmar police force, they want to arrest me wherever I am. This is what they told me, threatened me when I was in Nibido. My senior police officer has threatened me that if I stand up for democracy, and oppose them, they will arrest me and my family and kill all of us. So that made me so fear to, to join the CDM and to oppose the military agenda. But, but I had to do it. And then, surely they informed the Interpol as Nepal, yeah, international police force, international law enforcement agency to arrest me in abroad. So I was so worried and scared, not just me, for my family in Thailand. I could not protect them. That is why I was very low, very down in Japan. I could not speak Japanese and I could not know how to contact or how to do everything in Japan yeah. until I was granted as a convention refugee. So now I feel more confident than before to speak out to the interviews or to the press conference. Before that, I have to be quiet. I have to be silent because I have no protection, including for my family. That is why it was very difficult for me in Japan. And then, now, yeah, I feel more confident and I deeply appreciate Japanese government giving me this confidence to overcome my fear and to speak out about democracy and how brutal Myanmar gender did. They have no mercy. Mm. Since Naked Cyclone happened, we knew that that cyclone was not avoidable, but it was predictable and preventable. 
these people should not should not should not be dead in the cycle over 130,000 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Brutal Myanmar agenda, they focus on 2008 constitution and they just focus on their country power, but not to civilian. So that is the bad gender system. My mom was a victim. Mm -hmm. And now I and my family became refugees. Be a hero police captain. I'm really proud of this. And I always choose to be yeah, a democracy <coughs> police officer. Always choose to protect people like Professor Shaudane. And I could not be silenced when I see a good civilian is in a bad situation by a bad police officer, a policeman. And that is why. I choose to try CDM, Stand Up for Democracy, despite there is a serious suffering threat and danger to me and my family. Yeah. Do you, uh, are you, con or is there a concern on your part that uh, you speaking out publicly about democracy could put your family in Thailand in a greater danger? Yes, for sure. Since I stand up for democracy, since I oppose the brutal agenda, they, they are trying to arrest my family. They have already searched my home in Myanmar, mm -hmm. and they already reported or informed the right Thai police. They know my family location exactly, mm -hmm. you know? That is very easy to get my family back to Myanmar from Thailand. Because I was a police officer, a lesson police officer who arrested criminals in Thailand and back to Myanmar. And I saved many victims mm. in Thailand. I saved many good people. And I know how protective between Myanmar police force and Thai riot police. That is why, yeah. I'm always worried, and my family is always worried yeah, about their safety. Mm. But I have to speak out about my family's safety mm. and my family's life, because this is the only way that the Australian government can hear my voice and my story and know my partition to save my family's life. Mm. Okay. Mr. Tomnail, the um, Australia was uh, mentioned a number of times uh, as to uh, uh, his hope that the Australian government will take your, uh, his family in Thailand. But uh, can you just briefly uh, put, put that on speed uh, about where the, the Australia stands on this issue and what's happening uh, there? Go ahead. Yeah, certainly. Um, so obviously representations of people like myself are being made. Um, <clears throat> which is probably, you know, best, best not uh, spoken about in, in, in detail or whatever. But um, but certainly the Australian government needs to step up a bit on, on this and, and other things. Um, so, yeah, so the, the, there are people here who are, who are trying to do exactly that. Um, and, and that campaign goes on. So just, just to reassure on that. Um, one of the things I did want to say is... Um, uh, Joe San Han speaks absolutely the truth about this. It's really important to know, I think, that the Myanmar regime is not only incredibly brutal to the country's people, they've destroyed the economy, uh, but they do try and reach out, exactly as he's described. Um, probably you know, people in this audience might know, I, I myself are still subject to uh, their their desires to recapture and resentence and all the rest of it. So that, that they will reach out. Uh, all over the place. So the danger is ab absolutely real. Um, and yeah, nothing Jaw San Han has said is exaggerated. Mm. Um, and and nor his his role and, and fundamental decency, of which there's, you know, so many examples of that. Um, I, I also just wanted to pass my congratulations to the Japanese government for uh, giving a, a 
protection to Jules and Han. Uh, so and I know he appreciates that and, and his friends and so on appreciate that as well. Um, and and he's modest actually in in, in his claims. Let, let, let me just put that on the record as well. So um, yeah, so we're, we're, we're all trying, um, but as we all know, um, countries uh, are sometimes not generous. Um, but uh, but I think in in his particular circumstance as, as a person, I think the Japanese government has been has been that has been very generous and so on. So, um, but yeah, we, we, we've got to do more to pressure other governments. And if I could just appeal to the press there, just to say one way we can pr protect Bill San Han and his family now is giving attention, actually, because funnily enough, um, I think that uh, now that he has come out into the open in this way, uh, again, in this incredibly brave way, uh, the best thing we can do is to put the scrutiny on and, and to make sure that, that nothing bad happens. So um, just, just to suggest that I think all of us have uh, some degree of responsibility from this point. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are running over time, but are there any still some questions? Okay, we have two hands up. So uh, why don't you uh, go first, and then uh, you'll be the last one. I have a question for Mr. Tanel. Can you say your name? And yeah, my name is please? Shin Hara, and I'm working for Kyodo News, a Japanese news wire service. Thank and you. I wrote a story about uh, Kyo San Han the other day. And uh, uh, could you explain uh, your relationship with uh, Kyo San Han? Uh, what did you, he do for you yeah. while you were well, in so, Yeah, so much. I mean, I'd never met him before. Um, but uh, he was the interpreter who came to see me on the very first night that I was arrested. I, I was obviously in a very great deal of distress and not knowing what to do and so on. Um, he appeared and uh, with other police officers, but was always very nice to me, even while the other police officers were there and were not so nice. Uh, but subsequent to that, he made all sorts of assurances to me and, and just encouragement, gave me some very good advice, which I mentioned earlier, I only partially followed. Uh, he, he mentioned mindset a few times in his comments, and that's absolutely correct. Uh, Jo San Han's mindset is is a modern one. It's one we, you know, people like myself would fully appreciate, and so on. Uh, and that wasn't the case of some of the other officers, uh, we, which is, you know, an endemic problem in Myanmar. So, but anyway, Jo San Han reminded me of that and reminded me how I might go about answering their questions in ways that that would, you know, help me basically. Um, but yeah, just in, incredibly kind in, in an awful environment. It's hard to conjure it up now. Terrifying environment. This is all taking place, if I recall correctly, about 2 or, two or 3 a.m. in the morning uh, with the giant looming walls of insane looking down on us. Um, it's a horrible place. It's really terrifying doesn't begin to describe it. It's medieval in its appearance. Uh, and you've seen that. And, and I might add, George San Han has come to my rescue again. He's come to my rescue today because he, he had those pictures. Um, but, the, but the box itself was a horrific place. And uh, the fact that he took pictures of the way I was being treated, incredible risk. Uh, had he been found with that on his phone, let alone, you know, talking about it later and so on, he would have been uh, treated incredibly badly by the Junta. So, you know, even the fact that he took the pictures um, was an extraordinary act. So, um, yep, so I only first met him on the... Uh, 6th of February, or would have been the 7th of February by then, uh, 2021. Um, but, um, yeah, just, you know, he, he, as I mentioned, he was one of the people who saved my life and ultimately got me free. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, why don't you take the last question? Hello, I'm Risa from Kyoto News. Um, my question is toward Mr. Jo San Han. Sorry, thank you. Um, if possible, can you share um, how you ended up in Japan? Um, how you chose Japan, or did it happen to be Japan? Um, if possible, can you share that? And also, how many members of your family is in Thailand right now? And um, I understand you're asking the Australian government for help, but um, what can the Japanese government do? In my entire life, yeah, I have lived two countries. Yeah, apart from Myanmar, 
which is Thailand. Yeah, I did my uh, Ryan Police Academy. And the third one is Australia, where I did my master's degree, supported by Australian government. Because of my master's degree, supported by Australian government, I got a stronger democracy mindset to help good people to change Myanmar police mindset. And finally, I could briefly help Professor Shaunade's life. So after that situation, I wish to flee to Australia because this is the only country left for me to get the protection. But due to my passport, I had official passport only. And there is also a limitation in the passport that I could travel in Asia only. The brutal member gender, they think as long as I am in Asia, they can arrest me. Even my family members. So they think this is rich, rich ever, not far from their letter. They can request ASEAN police or in Asia. So after I training with my official passport, but Japan only could provide me a visa yet to come to Japan. And I arrived here and I submitted refugee application by myself. So there were very difficult times for me to settle here in Japan without any Japanese or anyone I know here. So after being granted as a conventional refugee, my condition was better and I feel more confident than before. So as for my family members, who are my dad, my sister, and my brothers, five in total now, so they are also waiting for the safe yeah, from the democracy government. Yeah. And they wish to flee to Australia because it will be far enough out of Myanmar brutal gender hmm. reach. Yeah, I hope I answered your questions. So it's uh, uh, your father and four brothers are in Thailand, total five. Four siblings, one older sister and three mm. younger brothers. Mm. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, well, thank you very much. I think we are running out of time unless uh, someone has uh, uh, dying to ask another question. I guess uh, we're good, okay. Um, so thank you very much, and thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Chanel, uh, for participating in this press conference. And uh, uh, if anyone wants to contact you, uh, what do they have to do? Uh, I'd, I'd certainly welcome that. Um, so uh, the usual channels, I guess, certainly uh, Facebook and all that. I, I'm a senior fellow at the Lowy Institute here in Sydney. So that, that's, that's, that's probably the best way, actually, okay. uh, for people just con contact me at the yeah, Lowy Institute. Okay. Um, and can you guys stay a little longer to exchange cars? Okay. okay. So uh, they will just stay on, um, just, you know, uh, to chat, uh, whoever wants to come forward. Okay. Well, again, thank you very much for coming to the press conference. And uh, this press conference adjourned.